Good morning, good evening, good afternoon, whatever time you are tuning in. Welcome to Homesteading and Gardening in the Suburbs. I'm Emma from Misfit Gardening and today we're talking about when to start tomato seeds. And I don't know about you, but I am so ready for spring to be here. I mean, we've had snow today, we've had rain. Um, it is pretty cold out there, so I'm pretty sure we're going to be getting some ice and it's it's not looking like spring is on the way at all however um when i was outside today i did realize that i've got so many cool weather crops that are all coming up so everything that i did a, a winter sowing of under the hoop houses like my spinach it's all coming up and some of the kale that I've got growing as well that's all coming up and we actually found believe it or not we found some salad uh, lettuces and things that have been growing in one of our raised beds without any frost protection whatsoever and if you've been listening to this podcast and you heard the one that I did last week about land race gardening, you can bet you I'm going to want to be saving seed from those lettuces that grew throughout winter. Those are definitely keepers, my friends. So today um, we're talking about tomatoes, right? And tomatoes, I guess, are kind of like the gardener's gateway drug you know it's the, the first kind of foray into gardening is usually with tomatoes um here in the us anyway it's more likely to be potatoes in england but they're all the same family they're part of the nightshade family um and tomatoes are what's known as a long season uh, warm weather crop so they're a summer vegetable right they need the heat um to grow they do not tolerate a frost right you get a little bit of frost or snow and those guys just keel straight over they're not um you know tolerant of cooler conditions at all there are some tomato varieties out there that will you know grow in a kind of cooler temperature um that's fine but the majority of them need warmer weather and we're talking like you know 80 fahrenheit 26 degrees celsius is kind of the optimum tomato growing temperatures so you know if you're kind of peeking out the window like i am and there's snow on the ground uh you're probably really wanting to be getting on with growing tomatoes but wondering when the best time is and you know the the key for growing tomatoes is really not to start them too early when i was in the uk i would start my tomatoes in december because it was kind of a cooler area where i was living i didn't have a greenhouse to grow them in or if i did it was like one of those pop-up little greenhouses that didn't offer up a lot of protection so i started my plants earlier so they were going to be bigger and i could plant them in a a sheltered sunny spot and i was kind of more likely to get a harvest um growing that way but where i live in the us that's not really a, a problem and we grow a lot of tomatoes here and um, we grow enough plants to be able to can enough tomato pasta sauce um salsa uh, crushed tomatoes chopped tomatoes like chili we use them in so many different things and we can a lot actually i kind of wish that i had more vacation time sometimes because when those tomato plants are producing mama's got to be making some sauce and she's got to be canning um so <laughs> we we grow a lot and i i understand that you know tomatoes are a really important food crop for a lot of homesteaders um, and gardeners here in the suburbs and there's something kind of kind of neat about not only having like the first ripe tomato on the block but having like the nicest tomatoes growing as well and they're a conversation point like my neighbor would look over um the fence before we had the vinyl fence put up and he would be commenting on how great the garden's looking how you know wonderful the tomatoes look and stuff it's just kind of mouth water and people get excited over growing them um in england there is you know very vegetable growing competitions right you know we we take our vegetable growing seriously um so i i understand how important a tomato um growing is 
And one of the key things is, you know, you don't want to be starting your tomatoes too early. And there's a couple of reasons for that. Number one, it means that you've got a lot of transplanting or potting on of your seedlings to do. Number two, you've got to give them plenty of space because tomato seedlings need a lot of light. They need light and they need warmth to grow well. And if you're not able to provide a lot of light for them, you're going to have what's known as leggy seedlings, which is where they grow really tall and spindly and kind of flop over there's not a lot of strength there because those seedlings are trying to grow towards the light they're desperate for that light and starting them too early can cause some issues with that um, if you don't have the space available to do that um, there was one year here on the homestead where we lost our dining room table I say it was one year, it was probably the last three years. Um, we lost our dining room table because it was, you know, it had sun on it almost all the day. And that's where my peppers and my tomatoes and everything were going whilst we were still waiting for the weather to warm up outside and us to transplant them over there. So, you know, there's some things to think about when you're starting your tomatoes. You really don't want to do them too early because, you know, if you've got to keep potting them on and transplanting them, that's an added cost of extra potting mixes, seed starting mixes. You've got to get some containers to put them into. And then you've got after you've done all of that and you've got them to you know a, a decent height you know when they're bigger than six inches you know you need to start thinking about the hardening off process which is where you take your seedlings outside for you know extending longer and longer periods of time throughout the day and then you bring them back inside at night when it's colder and you keep doing that to um, climatize them basically to those outdoor growing conditions because you know they've been kind of you know set up in your home they've got you know some nice sweet digs you know the temperature's nice they're watered often you know they're looked after they get all the light that they need and then you kind of put them outside and it's cold and you know they have what's known as transplant shock sometimes um so it's kind of important to you know really take that hardening off phase seriously and it can take up to two weeks to do that appropriately um, so that's another reason to think about it and when we had so many seedlings that we were doing we literally had six of those flat under bed storage containers like the big ones that were filled with one gallon pots full of tomato and pepper plants and there was me there was my husband there was my stepson we were carrying them all out and in and you know on a weekend it was great because I had a little bit of help carrying them out in the morning but every morning like before I would leave for work in the morning I was carrying out these huge things full of tomato plants and they were heavy because they were moist and having to put those outside where they were going to get sunshine and somewhere where the dogs weren't going to trample on them when they would uh, run out to go potty and stuff so there's some definite things to think about and actually it's more of a benefit for you as a homesteader to um, you know really consider when you're wanting to start your plants and not start too early because you know you can run into that problem where you've got so many seedlings and you're not sure what to do with them all and then you've got to try and find a place to put them and if the weather's bad you know you can end up with not a lot of space in your home because there's too many seeds kicking about um so when it comes to starting your tomato seeds, you know, really pay attention to what the packet's saying. And most of the packets say you want to start them indoors six to eight weeks before your last frost date. And to find your last frost date, I love to use the um, the old farmer's almanac uh, calculator thing, calendar thing that they've got. I will put a link to that in the show notes. Um, and you can just type in your zip code if you're here in the US. Um, I think they've also got an option for Canadian listeners too. Um, and you can find when your average last frost date is is there is a little bit of difference between the last frost dates and where the actual temperature and things are being recorded um, so for me for example it says my last frost date is April 30th but I know from the records that I've been keeping in my garden I have a snow around the first and second week of um, May 
and there's often like one last frost around the 10th of May. So I now don't plant out my tomatoes and my peppers and my warm loving crops until after the 10th of May because I want to be sure that those temperatures are higher. Um, They're well above 55 and I'm not going to run into any issues of those plants that I've lovingly raised from seed are going to keel over and die. Like I don't want that to happen. Um, But it's really important that you figure out when your average last frost date is because that's going to give you a great like rule of thumb for you to start your tomato seeds. Now obviously if you're like living in Austin, Texas or Montgomery, Alabama, your last frost date is going to be way earlier than what it is for somebody that's living in like Buffalo, New York, um, somewhere in Vermont um, or even up there in Michigan and you know you're going to have a much later frost date and um, potentially right up to somewhere in in May like I do or even in June in some places particularly if you've got a high elevation as well to contend with so it's really important to check out when your last frost date is and then all we're going to do is we're going to take that last frost date and then we're going to count back 6 or 8 weeks beforehand and then that's the day when we're going to start our seeds so for me with my current last frost date let's take it as being the 30th of um, April that's going to put me around starting first second week of March and that's perfect for me because right now we've got plenty of other veggies that are starting Um, we've got our leeks growing and they're going to start to want to begin seeing the great outdoors for the first time and start that hardening off process Um, because I'm going to be needing that space that they've been taking up under the grow lights to then keep my tomatoes happy. So that's how this works and I now don't try to go any more than eight weeks because you need to do um, a couple of transplanting pieces when it comes to starting your tomatoes and you know as your plant gets a little bit bigger you want to give it a little bit more growing space and actually tomatoes respond really well to this transplanting process because each time you're transplanting um, you're going to be doing it a little bit deeper and you're going to help build that root system because if you've got a really good strong root system then that's going to help support that plant especially when you've got lots and lots of luscious tomatoes growing on there. Now, when it comes to starting your tomato seeds, there's a couple of things that I want to talk about. First of all, we want to wash out any of our containers that we're using to start our seeds in. We could be using old styrofoam cups. We could be using actual seed modules. I like using seed modules, you know, whatever. But if we've used them for something else, let's give them a wash out because tomatoes, especially heirloom tomatoes, can be quite prone to picking up diseases. And the most common is a fungus, um, a fungal disease that happens called damping off, which is kind of where your plants start to grow and then they will kind of just just die off for no reason. And there's a couple of reasons why that happens. Sometimes it's bad soil. And sometimes it's kind of diseases and things that have been harboring onto your planting container. So I like to give my planting containers a thorough wash with some hot soapy water before I'm going to use them and use a good quality potting soil. Um, That's that's really the best advice I can give for um, somebody that's starting out is really invest in some good um, potting soil. And I know, you know, sometimes your choices are limited when you visit a big box store maybe you're having to order it online um there's there's a couple i've used all sorts of different ones in my time i've used ones that have been peat based ones that are coconut fiber based i like the coconut fiber based ones um they do tend to dry out a lot more so i always recommend to pre-wet your seed starting mix so i'll dump out the bag into a large bucket or 
I like those plastic trucks actually and I'll dump everything out into there and then I'll put in you know a couple of cups of water and mix everything up and then I'll just leave it for an hour or two to give a chance for that um, seed starting mix to actually absorb the water because if you don't do this step what's going to happen is when you go to water your um, your seed tray then those seedlings that you've just planted are going to float right up off and out of the container um, because I've done it and I know loads of other gardeners that have done it too so pre-moisten your seed starting mix and it's going to make your life so much easier as well and you know when you're starting your seeds you really want to start your tomato seeds dry um, because they actually stick better to the soil and are less likely to kind of float away um, when you do that. And you want to sow them about a quarter of an inch or six millimeters deep. And if you're doing it in a seed module tray, then only sow one tomato seed per tray. Um, if you're using like a three or four inch um pot or a cup or something you know maybe don't do more than two because it's going to be a lot easier for you to tease those apart and split them up during the potting on stage rather than trying to do lots of seeds in in one small space um, and that can be a little daunting as well if you're a new gardener trying to have to tease apart multiple seedlings and that can be kind of worrying for you as well. Um, but when when we're sowing them, we just want to pop one seed in and then lightly cover with a little bit of compost or just kind of pinch the compost over it and then water our seeds in. And the best way to water our seeds is actually from the bottom and just let that water wick its way up to the top of the seedling and then maybe mist the top of the seed tray just to kind of make sure that compost at the very top is moist and help stop things drying out um, and if we do it that way mostly from the bottom then we're going to cut down the amount of like like the fuzzy moldy growth that you might see on there you might also see like these compost fly gnat things kind of coming up and that kind of helps keep those things down and your seedlings or your seeds for tomatoes really like to be warm like 70 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or 21 to 26 degrees Celsius is their ideal temperatures to be actually starting to germinate and tomatoes will germinate quick so some people like to use a seed starting mat to help put that um, warmth underneath and it's going to you know warm the soil as well you know it's not just the air outside that triggers the germination but it's the soil temperature too and a, a heat mat for seed starting can really help with that um it's also you know great if you're doing you know not just tomatoes but peppers eggplants tomatillos um even squashes and melons and things things that need like heat to get going um you know a seed starting mat is really valuable i don't use one and i haven't used one um for years really for as long as I've been gardening but that's because I've been very lucky at wherever I've started my seeds has been somewhere where there's warmth so you know one of the rooms that I did in England it was right next to a radiator where I'm starting my seeds right now um, it's actually in a, a warmer part of the house so I don't have an issue with starting my seeds due to temperature but if you live somewhere that's a lot colder, then you might want to consider investing in something, especially if you're finding after a week or so you're not getting any growth. It might be because it's too, the soil's too cold. Now, we want to be checking our seeds regularly because tomatoes sprout usually within five to seven days. If they've not sprouted, then there might be a bit of a problem. Um, most likely it's because the soil's too cool, but it could also be from bad seed. Um, and if, if you're having um, problems with getting them to sprout, then try doing a simple germination test where you take a few seeds and you put them onto some moist paper towel in a little plastic bag that you can um, close and put them somewhere that's warm and see if they're germinating if they're germinating for you up there then you can try to 
plant those seeds into your seed starting mix and go from there. And if they're not growing that time, then the problem's likely to be um, the seed starting mixture that you're using. Um, all right, so <laughs> I digress. Um, so your sprouts from your seeds are going to be happening within five to seven days, right? And as soon as you see them coming up, you need to get your tomatoes under some bright lights, okay? Or a very sunny window. Um, I use grow lights now. And that's how I start all my warm weather crops. And the key to using your grow lights is you've got to get the light really close to that seedling. And you'll gently raise it up a little bit as those seedlings are growing. So don't start high. You want to start low and gently raise up. And then that way, that's going to encourage that shorter stocky growth you don't want spindly you know tall seedlings that are trying to reach for that light because if you've got leggy seedlings they are far more prone to problems later because they're weaker they're going to be more difficult for you to transplant and they can actually be more prone to um, disease problems as well later so remember you want to go go low with your lights and encourage that stocky growth if you're planting them and keeping them on a sunny windowsill, then you're going to want to keep turning your seeds um, or maybe coming up with some way to reflect some of that light back onto the plant to try and reduce them kind of bending towards the light and getting a little bit too tall there's lots of ways you can do that um, I used to have a piece of cardboard um, that was covered in some tin foil or aluminium foil or aluminum foil depending on where you're tuning in from and that worked great and I used to just kind of prop um, my cardboard foil covered um, reflector like just prop it up behind the se seedlings and I would still turn the seedlings you know every day um, but that kind of helped stop the the bending that happens when they're just trying to reach for the light that's coming in one direction and then after usually about 15 to 25 days um, you will need to do what's known as pricking out and this is more applicable if you're growing your seedlings in in like one tray so maybe you've got like a an old salad box or something and you've put some um, seed starting mix in there and put some seeds in there you want to make sure that you know you want to give those tomato seeds space to to grow and this is where pricking out comes in and it's basically where you're going to transplant your small seedlings after they've got their first set of true leaves and you're going to want to put them into larger individual containers so they've got room to kind of spread their root and get established a bit and you know an old fork or an old spoon like go to the charity shop or the thrift store and get one that's dedicated to gardening and like I wouldn't recommend like using a spoon that you're going to use later um you know to eat your dinner with but uh, I mean a fork's great because you can kind of you know poke in next to the seed you want to lift up all the roots and the soil that's attached in there then you're going to you know fill your um your new container with some soil and make a hole that's going to be big enough to take those roots and then gently put it in put the seedling into there in the roots and you want to bury that little seedling all the way up to those first little baby leaves that are there so they're kind of like pointy leaves they're little kind of oval points and they're kind of skinny and you want to plant it up to there because every time that you're planting that stem down like I said earlier you're going to encourage more root growth and the more root growth that you've got the sturdier your tomato plant is going to be and also the more nutrients and stuff it's going to be able to get to when you're pricking out and transplanting your tomato seeds you really want to be careful about doing it the stems on tomato seeds are just so so delicate and they're really prone to breaking so if you can try and hold the seedling by one of those little 
baby leaves like the little pointy baby leaves um, to kind of maneuver it a little bit if you need to um, the other thing is if you're planting in those little individual modules you can kind of wait a little bit until they're bigger and you're starting to see roots coming out of the bottom before you're transplanting um, that seedling so that's why I like to use the modules because it gives me um, an extra couple of weeks before I need to transplant those seedlings and then you want to just kind of transplant them into something that's a little bit bigger you know give them some new potting soil and stuff that's in there and this will be kind of a good time for you to give them their first little bit of food as well so I like to use some organic um, plant fertilizers I like to use kelp that's like a great um, you know all-purpose you know liquid tonic that we like to give our plants I keep it super dilute um, partly because you know it, that stuff can be really expensive to buy um, but also you don't want to give your plants too much in one go because then they're going to have this big flurry of growth and then you're going to have to transplant them into a bigger container again um so you know it's just something that kind of helps with the transplant shock a little bit um without going overboard and then you know as you're you know plants are growing you know we're getting closer and closer to spring at this point and we want to be thinking about planting our tomato plants outside when you know the temperatures outside are around 55 fahrenheit or 13 degrees celsius during the day and the night okay because temperatures kind of below this that's when you know we're starting to gonna we're gonna see some transplant shock issues um but like I said in the beginning, since our tomatoes have been, you know, lovingly cared for inside our homes and, you know, I don't know many people who keep their house at 55 degrees Fahrenheit. Like most people keep it around 60, 65. There's a gal that I work with who has her house at 75. I'm thinking, oh my gosh, I would be dying. That's way too hot for me. Um, But, you know, your seedlings are used to whatever temperatures you've got set um, in your home and going down to 55 can be quite a shock for them so we want to you know give them a little bit of a taste of the outdoors slowly and we're going to do that by hardening our plants off so we're going to take our seedlings outside and put them in a sheltered spot um, in a warm sheltered spot where they can get some sunshine for an hour and then we'll bring them back in and then the next day maybe we'll do it again for an hour maybe an hour and a half two hours and then bring them back in and we're going to keep doing this taking them outside getting for longer and longer periods of time and bringing them back in for about two weeks now there's a couple of things that can help us with this hardening off process number one is if you've got a greenhouse or a cold frame we can pop them in in there and open things up so they get used to that outside temperature and then close it up again and that can kind of help us do it uh, do that a little bit quicker um, if you've got a plastic storage tote with a lid that makes a good makeshift cold frame to protect your seedlings and it means it's easier to carry your seedlings in and out um, of the house and um, you know the storage tote itself is going to kind of help protect from some of those um, winds that might be cooling things down a little bit you want to make sure you take the lid off whilst they're outside to um, you know help them get the benefit of some real sunlight um, and experience some of those temperatures we don't want to be putting them somewhere that's super shady because it's going to be a lot colder there we want to give them some sunlight too but again over the course of a week or two weeks just keep bringing them out putting you know for a little bit bringing them back in, inside and uh, giving them you know time to really acclimatize to your growing conditions now whilst we're doing this we can actually be warming our soil using a hoop like a little mini hoop house like some row cover um, a little bit of um, plastic over 
the bed um, particularly if you've got black plastic like an old trash bag or something and you can pin that down on your growing space um, that's going to help warm the soil and it's going to be so much better for your tomato plants if that soil's warm and ready to go when it comes to planting and of course as soon as those temperatures are 55 degrees fahrenheit 13 degrees c plus you should be good and just keep an eye on the weather though and make sure there isn't you know any um you know frosts or anything um predicted if there is then you are gonna need to get out there and cover your crops and you're going to make sure that you are going to cover it with you know maybe a couple of layers to make sure that those tomatoes are not going to be feeling that cold and if you've been successful in your growing and you've got seedlings that are you know about six inches 15 centimeters tall before you plant them it's a good idea to trim off those or prune those bottom two sets of leaves or the first pair of leaves even and then when you plant that tomato plant bury it all the way up to um and make sure that that root joint is uh, the leaf joint sorry that you've pruned is in the ground because all of that space is going to be where more roots are going to grow and that's going to really help those plants get off to a good start so whenever you're planting your tomatoes you want to bury them up to the leaves and then all of that stem that's all going to produce roots and that is one key thing when it comes to planting your tomatoes and getting good healthy plants is you've got to plant them deep and lots of people like to add things to the planting hole I mean, I've read on the internet about all sorts of different things that people are putting in there from bone meal to aspirin. There's a few things that I like to put into my tomato planting hole and I've done it for a number of years. Um, number one is crushed eggshell and gypsum to combat some blossom end rot. Even though I have a lot of eggshells and stuff in my compost, I add a little bit more because crushed eggshell and gypsum provide calcium and calcium helps maintain um, some of the cell functions within the plant that help stop that blossom end rot happening. I like to add some worm castings for a nutrient boost. I add some kelp meal because that adds in some extra trace minerals. I also add some mycorrhizal fungi, which um, like it improves the soil um, by providing more microorganisms in there. And the more diverse our microorganisms are in the soil, the more things that are broken down, the more nutrients that become available for our plants. So I really like to do that. And I also like to add in biochar because that helps kind of provide a home for all of those microorganisms. And, you know, that's kind of one of the things that helps really like kick off the soil and um, make really great gardens grow so I like to use those two things and then of course I always add in like my own compost that I've made and um, recently I've started adding a little bit of Epsom salts to help reduce some of the blossom end rot that um, we've been seeing some of our varieties of tomatoes seem to be a little bit more susceptible to blossom end rot than some of the others so that's kind of been helping things out and then when you plant your tomatoes you really want to um, add your support right away because once tomatoes are in the ground and happy they grow and they grow quick and there's nothing worse than trying to add a support especially if you've got those fold out tomato cages um, like I use if you're trying to put a support in over a large um, tomato plant like it's it's not going to work so it's much easier to do it when they're small and then just kind of keep checking things as as they grow now last year was a really cool springtime for us and our tomatoes took ages to get started um, and to get established because it was so much cooler and it's kind of looking that way this year like everything seems to be a month behind which is why i'm kind of holding on on um starting my tomatoes probably until like mid-march because i want to make sure that 
I'm not going to be having the delayed start to the season like I did last year. And actually, our tomato harvest last year was much lower than the year before because of that slow start to the spring. So it really pays to kind of look at the conditions and the the season and how it's progressing and also have a chat with other gardeners that you might know there might be some people at work who garden as well like I found out a couple of my co-workers were super into gardening and they all said the same thing that it was a really late season for them and they had a terrible tomato harvest so even though I've been gardening for quite some time like I felt a real failure at growing my tomatoes last year because I didn't get as good a harvest but it was actually a lot of it was due to the the climate and the season that we had so when it comes to caring for our tomatoes there's a couple of things that we need to think out about and like my favorite is to try and avoid watering with overhead sprinklers if you can and water at the roots because tomatoes hate getting their leaves wet and when they get their leaves wet they're a lot more prone to disease um, and diseases on tomatoes can spread really quickly um, and they're kind of prone to a lot of diseases like blight um that that's a pretty nasty one so um i wherever you can try and avoid um watering with overhead sprinklers and put some mulch on the soil as well because that's going to reduce splashing onto the leaves and that can actually cause um, more problems with that soil splashing up and certain um you know diseases and things that are living in the soil can get up onto your tomato plant i also like to prune my tomato plants um, under the base and if i can get at least a foot difference between where the soil level is and where the first set of leaves are great because that's going to give a lot more airflow around my plants and that's going to help combat some of those problems with diseases by giving them that airflow um one thing that i found worked pretty well was using comfrey like uh, comfrey compost tea was pretty good but also um it, when i was cutting back my comfrey plants so they would flower again um i just dumped like the chopped comfrey plants around my tomatoes and that works as a really good mulch for them as well and it it fed them as that comfrey plant was breaking down so i love to use things um you know and reduce the waste and that was a really good um find that i had so i'm kind of curious if you've got some great tips for growing tomatoes and you know mulches that have worked wonderfully for you I have read a lot that using red plastic mulch is um, great if you're in a short season area because that red plastic helps your tomatoes ripen quicker. So that's something to think about if you're in a really short season area, if you're in one of the northern states, um, look into getting um, some red plastic mulch. Also make sure that you're checking your tomatoes regularly for signs of disease, um, prune out those affected areas, but also check them for bugs as well like where i live in utah we have these giant crickets that come and they love tomatoes and i can't tell you how many tomatoes that were um ripe that i found that had been munched on by crickets i was really disappointed and a lot of that was because i wasn't vigilant this year in checking for them and uh, tomato hornworms, another one that a lot of people um, seem to have issues with. I've not ran into that yet here in the US, but I definitely have the problem with the crickets. If you're quick with the crickets, you can pick them off. I'm not. I scream like a little girl because they're wiggly and kind of gross. Um, when we had chickens, I would um, carry a chicken into the garden and then kind of show them where the cricket was on the plants so they would peck the cricket off i'm kind of embarrassed to tell you guys that i did that but i did um and you know if you get caterpillars or hornworms on your tomatoes grab some gloves pick pick off as many as you can because um hornworms and caterpillars are eating machines and they will decimate your um plants pretty quickly crickets are, are also um you know pretty good at decimating plants but they only seem to eat the fruit rather than the leaves um and you know 
give your plants a regular feed because even though you've added all these wonderful things to the soil sometimes your plants need a little bit of a boost and I definitely see this because I'm growing on a sandy soil and sandy soils don't hold nutrients very well. So I find that, you know, every couple of weeks, if I give them a little bit of boost with a liquid fertilizer or compost tea, that really helps. And one thing to you know, really take in mind when it comes to um, growing your tomatoes is regular watering. Because if you're growing heirloom tomatoes in particular, they've got really thin skins and they're very prone to cracking. And that happens when the watering schedule's not quite right. Um, sometimes, you know, maybe they're dry for, you know, too long a period of time and then they get a load of water at once and then the tomato fruits swell and then they crack and then when they crack you know if you're not kind of picking them regularly or they're not ripe then you can end up with you know them kind of going moldy um, on the vine so try to get on a regular watering schedule and keep that soil moist um, but not waterlogged and that will help those fruits keep from cracking. And also using mulch as well. Mulch helps to retain that moisture as well. So there we have it. Uh, I hope you found this episode useful on when to start your tomato seeds. And I'd love to hear from you guys and know what tomato seeds you're looking to start and when you're going to be starting them. Until next time, I'm Emma from Misfit Gardening and I hope that your garden grows beautifully.